I'll give you a little heads up. When we first started talking about this, this talk, um, we talked about me giving you sort of an experience that I had um, with introducing change at Netflix. And um, I promised to explain the things that went bad as well as the things that went good. And I think that as an industry, we tend to gloss over the things that went bad, especially if we're on stage, right? So I'm gonna try to be pretty honest about things that went bad, things that we could do better. And I'll warn you at the very end of the talk, I'm going to ask you guys for your suggestions. Are there things that I missed that I could have done to make this go better? All right, so I think the image is working, so we'll get started. Um, I, once again, I'm Diane Marsh. I lead the engineering tools team at Netflix. And what this means is that um, we build the software that other teams at Netflix use for building, baking, deploying to the cloud. It means what we're charged with is making sure that the other teams at Netflix can deploy as fast as they possibly can. We don't want to get in their way of innovation, so it's, it's our job to make sure that we support that innovation. And we get to innovate ourselves also. What we don't do is we don't build, bake, or deploy for them, and we don't manage any of their configurations. So we wouldn't scale as a team to support all of the teams at Netflix. So instead, what we're building are tools that lend themselves very well to self-service. And so um, these are tools that the other teams use, and it's really important to us that they're not dependent on us. So what I'm going to show you are some of the planned migrations that we rolled out to the other teams. I started talking about these, I think, in April or May of this year. And we ask a lot of our teams at Netflix. We ask them to deliver features all the time. Um, you guys probably see that at home. How many of you are Netflix subscribers? Thank you for uh, supporting our salaries and our service, but, um, and for our, our supporting our innovation. So sometimes you go to Netflix and you'll see something just got added, right? Um, and we deploy, each team at Netflix defines their own deployment schedule. Some people deploy once a week, some teams deploy you know, a couple times a week. Some, people, some teams deploy every day. Um, and some teams don't deploy that often, okay? So everybody's sort of on their own schedule. We don't have a lot of processes overall in the whole company. We really let our teams define their own processes, okay? It's really important to us to have migrations, though, because we want to, as an engineering tools team, we want to innovate, too. We don't want to just support software. We want to move things forward. So we described a couple of things that we thought really needed upgrades. And I'll explain the why later. But from operating systems to build tools to version control, these are things that really needed to be addressed. And they needed to be addressed pretty soon, particularly because one of our goals was to get all of our tools out of the data center. We wanted to experience the same agility, business agility, that our service experiences, but for our tooling. And the way to do that is to get out of our, our data center and put it in the cloud. So I would be remiss if I tried to talk about anything at Netflix without bringing in culture, because it's this culture of freedom and responsibility that lets my team innovate and, and expect other teams to, uh, to respond to that innovation and, and keep up with us, right? Um, if we had to wait for permission from another team to change the build tool system, that wouldn't be a very fun team to work on, right? So instead, we can say the best tools that we've figured out, we're the experts, we're the domain experts for build tools. So we've said, here's the best tool that we can give you for build tools. And we expect that you're going to experience a benefit also. But we can't do is mandate that people use it. So there's no top-down control that says, everybody needs to go to Nebula Gradle because that's what the Build Tools team said. Instead, we need to make it really attractive. So in a sense, all the other teams at, at Netflix really are our customers. They can choose not to buy from us. They can say, you know what, this old system that we have, this custom build system that we've had in, in place for a long time based, based on Ant and Ivy, works for us, we're just gonna stick with that. And we need to be non-opinionated about that. They can stick with it, but they get to own and run it, because we're done, right? So once this migration is complete, we're gonna be done. We really manage by context, not control. So um, if you were in Sarah's talk an a, a hour or so ago, you, you learned that one of the really important things to do is to give people context. 
We spend a lot of time. So my job as a manager is to give context to other teams about what we're doing and take context back from them so to, my, to my team so that we can inform the things that we invest in. But with freedom comes responsibility, right? I can introduce all this change to Netflix, but I darn well better be responsible for the impact that this change has. And so I started thinking about what is the best way to support this change across the organization. So the first thing I did was I picked up some key stakeholders that I knew around the company that were quite opinionated. Um, we might say that they're the guys who usually have the strongest opinions about things and I thought might have some concerns about the changes that we were going to introduce. And so I took them aside and I showed them what I was planning on doing. And they gave me feedback and I rolled that back into my plan before I rolled it out to uh, other managers at Netflix. I think that really helped a lot to sort of you know, bring them along and make them a part of the process. It also really improved my plan. One thing I defined was I defined the paved road. So these migrations that I described in the, in the earlier slide around version control, build system, operating system for our AMIs, and a deployment tool, those are tools that we've committed to supporting in the future, and they're also tools that will ensure work well together. Okay, so I'm calling this the paved road. There's on-ramps onto the paved road, and I'll show you how we did that too. But um, it's, it's really a commitment from my team to the other teams at Netflix to say, we're not going to change these out from underneath you in the near future. Certainly we will ultimately, but not in the near future. And like I said, it's really my job to support velocity across the organization. So I thought, how, how can I do this? I, these teams, we're asking them to you know, continue with their day jobs, right? But then somehow roll in these migrations in as well. And certainly they have not planned for this, right? They did not say, we are going to build in time to do all these things Diane says is imp are important. So what I came up with was um, sort of uh, modeled after my experience as a software consultant. I, th I thought what we needed was a customer engagement team. So I hired a team of people that were technical experts, software developers, had experience doing development, right? I stayed away from project managers. I stayed away from um, the, the traditional um, TPM role. I don't know if you guys have you heard the TPM role. So there's a technical program manager and they tend to um, push programs through. And I think it's a really great role if you've defined it well. But in my opinion, it's high T, so high on the technical. So I wanted developers. I wanted this experience to come from in the trenches so that you could go one on one with developers as they had concerns, you could address them. So I hired this team and I didn't have to go get permission to hire the team. I was able to say, here's what I need this team to do, and I was able to go and hire this because at Netflix, we're autonomous, so my organization is autonomous, and I know what's best for my organization, so I'm able to create a new team without going through a lot of rigmarole and saying, you know, we need to go and create this team, and I need to get, you know, uh, permissions all the way up. That's not how we do it. We just say, we need a team, here's what the function's going to be, and I went and hired for it. And certainly I asked a lot of questions and got, gave a lot of context to my manager and other managers at Netflix and got a lot of opinions about what this team should look like. But, I, but the key here is we didn't ask permission. So I also embedded this customer team in the development teams. So not in the development teams, meaning the teams that were adopting our new technologies, not initially. Initially, I embedded them in the development teams that were building the tooling that we were going to ask our other teams to, um, to migrate to. So for example, the team that was building a new build system based on uh, Nebula and Gradle, um, Nebula is the Netflix build language, it's, it's uh, plugins that sit on top of Gradle. I embedded a developer on that team so that he truly understood how we were building that system. And so that when he went out to our internal customers to help them adapt this technology, that he was an expert at least as well as he could be in, in, in from coming from the space of being a developer on the project not just an outside observer who was going to have to be a proxy for the developers. And I think that that was really important, it, a important part of the success. Our goals were, like I said, to engage with our customers. I wanted to share that cost of change with them, recognizing that you know, I, I don't want to impact their velocity too much. And uh, like I said in the very beginning, I really want to encourage self-sufficiency. So he was, this, these engagement, uh, this customer engagement team swoops in helps the team and gets out, right? So we're not managing anything beyond the engagement. And I did start with the why. 
So I talked a lot about all of the benefits that each one of these tools provided and what we thought this was going to bring to the organization. And the one that needed the most socialization was certainly you know, getting out of the, uh, the our tools out of the data center. Um, that required a lot of socialization. It also um, sort of drove some of the other requirements. So if I want to move our, our uh, developers from Perforce to Git, for example, um, I, the, Perforce right now runs in our data center. And so part of getting out of the data center means we really need to migrate everybody off of Perforce and on, on to Git. Right? So socializing not only the fact that we're doing that, but also the real benefits of distributed version control, the benefits of the business agility that this was bringing us to getting out of the data center, it all coalesced in that, that messaging. What I didn't worry about was the easy sells. So I, all I had to do is put up this graph around build times for our existing CBF build framework and our new Nebula Gradle based build framework and teams are like, okay, where do I get started? Because it was saving so much time, right? That's in minutes. And I, we provided guidance on the order in which things should be adopted. So it was really important for us to, um, like I said, make this well paved road and make it easy for people to on ramp onto this super highway, right? So get on the version control system because that helps you adapt the build system more easily. Um, once you're on the new build system, then that supports building Debian so you can go to the Ubuntu-based AMIs, and then the deployment tool will work well after that. So we, we gave them this guidance around what to start with. Because, you know, people you say, I want you to make all these migrations, they're like, where the heck do I start, right? Dates or it won't happen, right? If I would not have given people dates, they'd still be sitting there staring at each other, be, you know, working on other really good business problems, right? Providing you guys with great features for Netflix, but not my, my uh, migrations would be sitting on the back shelf with nobody wanting to commit to them, right? So we really, it was important to our team to have these deliverables. It was important for me to co give context about what those dates were and what they were driven from. But we had to be flexible. There are some teams, I, I put a, a date toward the end of this year for getting out of the, our tools out of the data center. And there are some teams that, that came to me and they said, you know, Diane, we have a lot of really big deadlines between now and the end of the year. We're, we're, we'll try in the fourth quarter, but I suspect that this is going to drag into Q1. Got to be flexible, guys, right? Like, there's, nothing's going nothing's to happen bad if we aren't out of the data center on December 31st, right? Um, so while we want to motivate people to move out as soon as they can, we, we aren't going to put other deadlines at risk for that. And I went on a road show. Um, I, I was telling somebody else here, one of the hardest things about joining Netflix was understanding how many teams there are and how to communicate with them broadly. And so what I, one thing I did really badly is um, I, I socialized what we were doing. I sent it all out. It started in April or May. And then about a month ago, um, I got an email from a guy saying, what? I didn't know we were switching version control systems. And what the heck? What did I miss, right? I missed all of the UI teams, all of them. So um, how did I do this? Well, you know, <laughs> there are a lot of teams. And I socialized with the server engineering managers, which is a, a, a group that you know, I talk to a lot. And I thought I had captured everybody in there. Well, you know, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to know that the UI people are not in server engineering managers. I just missed it. Right? So then I had to backpedal a lot, go get those guys all up to speed, and I went on um, some more road shows with other teams that I had missed. Right? I think it's really important when you're doing a migration of this, um, of this nature to really respect the journey, respect that some teams are, you know, they're super well staffed, they have lots of people that can do these types of things, and they're going to be well adept at making these migrations. There are other teams that are, you know, really bare bones. They just haven't hired as fast. They haven't been able to hire as fast. You know, we do have a talent shortage in this area. Um, you know, they've, they've been behind, and, and they have a lot of things that they're trying to deliver. And so really respecting the difference between those teams has been really important to not causing a lot of um, annoyance in our customer teams. We also learned that we had to build a lot of tooling to support this migration. I had to build tooling because as we pull our tools out of the data center, um, and, and move them into the cloud, we needed to build some tooling to see where things were, to both operationalize it. Um, these aren't tools that typically go into the cloud, and so we're building a lot of support structures around that. Um, 
And that was just part of the commitment that we had to make if we're going to get out of the data center. So building tooling was really important. And um, one unexpected side effect was that um, letting Jenkins do the talking about migrations of things that we were going to deprecate was um, a really nice way to let people know. Before that, we were reaching out to teams and asking if we could help. But as soon as we put a message up on, on Jenkins, which we use for continuous integration, teams are coming to us saying, wait, wait, what, what? We're going to deprecate this. And so, you know, it, somehow people believe it when it's on their screen on the tools that they use every day. And so it's been a really helpful tool to understand to let the tools talk for you. Okay, so how did we do? Well, I'll show you. We um, are at about 63, 64% um, adoption for our, our version control system and our build system which is pretty good, except when you understand this, right? The innovation curve, um, we're in that late majority, and we have the long tail to go, right? So those people at the beginning, those are easy. Those are the people that we're going to do it anyway. So those are the people that we didn't really have to reach out to. And so I think that we're, we're definitely behind the curve on this, right? I think that for the end of the year, it's going to be a big challenge to try to, to um, push this through. But um, it's good to have the data. And what can I do to improve? Well, I think I could have done more outreach. Obviously, I shouldn't be missing teams, right? Um, I think more transparency and dashboards about what we were doing would have helped a lot. Orientation for other teams. So like, where is my team when compared to other teams on adopting all of these migrations? I think that would help. It would apply just a little bit of peer pressure and understanding about where the rest of the company is that might help them to reach out for help. Um, and, and adapt the migrations. And we've kind of realized that we did a lot of training around some of the things that we didn't need to, like maybe Git, right? There's lots of online training for Git. Do we really need to have custom training for Git? I think we need custom training for custom solutions, right? For maybe our build system that we're building on top of Gradle so there aren't that many people who know how to do it. But if you can Google for it, we probably shouldn't be training. We probably shouldn't be wasting our time doing that when we could use that valuable time to reach out to other teams. And I think that I, um, I hired too slowly for this, for this role. And you know it's always a big challenge, but I think I could have brought more people in. Thanks so much for coming.